Hello. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Sisters and Wellies. Another week has come round. I'm the new sister. <laughs> so in case you haven't noticed, Poppy hasn't just aged 30 years. <laughs> um, that, yeah. So when Poppy and Johnny got married back in December, me and Blair thought she bought them tickets to go to Bath for a couple of days. Not to have a bath. <laughs> a two day long bath. So they've actually gone there this week. Um, so my dad has stepped in. Stepped in to help out on this video. Yeah, so we're going to do a video on our calves this week. Just the routine. Really. Yeah, the routine on the calves, like how we look after them, um, how it works here on our farms. So in our YouTube video where we did a day in the life of farmers, we very, very briefly, I think it was like a five minute stint, just showed you the calves. And we did mention that we do feed them milk every single day, twice a day. And that's really, really important. So that's morning and night they get fed milk. And then in between then, we will do what we're going to do now. So yeah, it's really important that they have all the nutrients. So they, they get fresh straw, fresh hay um, every day, twice a day. We top them up as needed. We keep the beds dry. They also got get flakes, cake and, and wheat mixed uh, according to their ages. The older calves get more cake and less uh, flake. Hello, say. Uh, yeah, hello. so we're going to do the routine. So you're going to see what we're going to do. Uh, it doesn't take us long. It takes us probably 15 minutes for two people twice a day uh, to keep everything nice and clean. Uh, and of course, it's very important, they have water as well, in case I forgot to say that. We've only got one water tank actually plumbed in. So we, we tend to take the water from that and put it in, in troughs. When the calves get a little bit bigger, they move to different sheds and they have their own water trough and everything's a little bit easier again then. And the reason you can see his whole face and not just his forehead is because I was filming. So that is how the large majority of this video will work is I will film and I'll try and keep my dad away from the camera. <laughs> I'm going to get a bit of straw. Yeah, I think it took her in 0.2 seconds to fall asleep. So she's done a good job there of getting out of feeding the car. So we're going to put a straw bale just by here. And we have it nice and close so that we can feed all the calves. So here comes our dad, Richard, with the bale. So he is just going to put it nice and close for us. And he's also just gonna ruffle up our hay for us so it's easier to grab as it was a round tail. Whoa, Whoa granddad. So he's gonna take the string off. The string is what's holding the bale together. I think there's six pieces of string on it holding it together. Oh. Does your knife need sharpening? No. My my long bladed knife. It's absolutely tiny. I'll leave that one on now. So it doesn't collapse on me. Pull the string down. Hopefully. I feel a bit pressured doing this. Because you're being watched. Because I'm being watched, yeah. But uh, I'll do my best. Yeah, we've got all them. Let's just take them off quickly. Like that. Put them down in the rubber sheet. I'll get my knife back out. Find my uh, really small blade. Teeny tiny blade. Yeah, that's my little blade. I'll stand clear. Yeah, too bad. Nice. I think that's the easiest way to take the strings off. We've tried a few. Um, the nice thing with it doing it on the end like that, we can get the leaves easier. If you put them flat, they're harder to, uh, to get. So, one very important thing for calves is roughage. Uh, when they start eating roughage, it tickles their tummies and it makes them want to eat more roughage. And then when they start doing that, they can be weaned off milk quite easily and they'll, they'll grow really well. So it's important they get really nice dry hay or straw like this, which is really good. So we like to try and give them barley straw. That's a good, quite a nice straw. We've quite short of straw this year. Um, it's been a couple of poor harvests the last couple of years for corn. So we've got this quite locally, so it's quite good. Um, we've got some fairly good hay there, it's not the best, but it's alright. 
I think we've got some better stuff to give them next time we bring the bale in. And uh, we're going to show the routine of doing that. So this is before we have fed them. So even though we do it every day, you can see some of them are a little bit wet down the back. Their food isn't too bad, but needs topping up. They've eaten all of their food, so they definitely need more. We'll freshen up their water as well. So this is all before. So they're really calm and quiet. They're really, really happy, but you can see they just need topping up. Fresh burden's quite important. So much to hear tonight. Our mum has turned up to help. <laughs> so she's just got in the pen. So we're gonna start by strawing them down. So that's the first thing we're gonna do today. So my dad is just chucking the leets in. So he's grabbing his long leets. <laughs> Not from long leet, the long leets. <laughs> and then our mum is just gonna straw them down. It's easy as it's two. One can stay on the outside. One can stay in there. I quite like the job of being on the outside. Yeah. Throwing it in and letting it dawn all the dusty work. What we really need is a straw chopper. A straw chopper, yeah. Gosh, that calf literally. And the calves do get really excited when they do this. They run it around. And that's also why it's easier with two people. If you've only got one, they, by the time you've chucked it in, the calves will just run all over it. But yeah, they're excited now. And we've only just started. So they are only babies. They do like to play, have a lot of run around. So the bed and underneath them is really important for their health as well, to make sure they stay dry. So they don't get things like pneumonia um, and just general that you want them to be clean and in a good condition. So this straw will help that. should say that this, this building is actually a corn and um, hay and straw storage building originally but we've uh, got a lot more stock now we tend to have more dairy cows more replacements so we've got a lot more calves so we've kind of used this shed in the last couple of years for calf rearing it's uh, it is a sort of temporary job it's not done properly but it does work quite well um but as you can see it's a bit of a makeshift job um we're hoping to sort of uh, develop it a bit more next year uh, into a proper shed where the gates will be hanging and everything like that. But it does work. We will be pulling these gates out in time and opening the pens up, making them bigger. I said a little it's a bit, bit like what we've done here. So these are now two pens into one, rather than having. So as they grow with age, you have to accompany what they need. And then eventually they'll move out of the shed altogether. So there's the said water tank. Gosh. I feel we get further away from the door, it gets harder for me and no harder for Dawn. So in the, long, in the long run, She's got by far the job. Well, she has to climb every gate. Yeah, but she's good at that. And you are literally chucking straw at her. She's used to climbing because she's got short legs, so she's always had to climb over things. <laughs> so it's important to give them enough, but it's also important not to like go OTT because they will just waste it then. And as my dad's already mentioned, especially this year, we're quite short on straw. It's expensive to buy in. Um, so you don't want to like overdo it because we do do this every single day. So we can just redo them again tomorrow. So it's important to get the right balance. Um, yeah, and we try and keep the balance. And uh, as she said, uh, quite rightly so, I think a straw chopper will be something that we'll probably look at this year. We've got the shed next door, which is the autumn calves, which are looking really well. But we have to do the same kind of process in there, spreading the bale manually. And it would really work a lot better with a straw chopper and I think it probably go a lot further as well. So something we look at, hopefully if we can afford to buy a new straw chopper this year. So if there's anyone out there that would like oh. to buy us a straw chopper. <laughs> <laughs> so you're starting to see why my parents are so fair. <laughs> Thank 
head. Yeah, they're small, but calves are absolutely brutal. They're very strong. And calves okay, stand on your foot is awful. So, so uh, as you can see us going on through the pens, the smaller the calves are, the much less mucky they are. Because obviously these calves are growing, they're getting bigger, and they do need a little bit more space. So as we stand at the moment, this is as much space they get, so we just have to straw them down more regular to keep them clean. These ones here now, we can use a little bit less straw just to keep them fresh and just put straw where it needs to be. So is that straw done? That's all the straw done. As you can see, I'm helping as well. And that pen. So that's all straw done. So that's already made a massive difference. So next we're going to do water, is it? Water next, yeah. I think I should point out all, all the calves in here are Frisian heifers. There's 80 calves in here and they're all Frisian heifers. So they'll all be replacements to the herd in around two years time. Okay, so we've moved on to water. So when they're at this age, it's really, really important that they do have water, but they're not gonna drink massive amounts of it yet. Because they're having milk twice a day, obviously that's a fluid intake. They will definitely drink water. It's important they have it. But the fact they don't have a water shop in the pen isn't the end of the world. It's nice and close. So my dad's gonna fill it up and pour it in. So they're having fresh, clean water every single day. That's my favorite pen to do. Yeah, because it's so Along close, and this one. <laughs> so if I go over to my mum then, she's just ahead of my dad. So she's actually emptying, if there's anything left in the water. She's emptying it out. This is because some calves will stand in it. They might even go as far as pooing in it. <laughs> so she's just going to empty it out. And then literally all my dad's got to do is go around and fill it up. So some would say my mum's... <laughs> yeah, yeah mum's doing all the hard work. <laughs> I, uh... Well, to be fair, I'm literally just stood here filming. I, I, I should say that I don't do the calves very often. To be fair, it's usually the two girls and Dawn quite often do the calves but I'm standing in today, purely. So I am inexperienced at doing it. I hope you think I'm doing okay. You're doing great. Because I haven't done it for about a year. <laughs> yeah, so it's important. The main thing is just making sure it's clean and fresh. That's why my mum's going ahead and just emptying out all the old, old water. So as the calves get bigger, more water I clean. So, as you can see, the younger calves have a small trough of water. So these now will be probably, they don't drink a whole tub a day, but they'll be topped up again tonight. And as you get to these bigger calves here, they will need water morning and night. And they've got big troughs then. So they haven't finished it from last night, but um, yeah, they've got a lot bigger troughs because there's more of them. So yeah, water is really important, as you've already said. Right, we've got some more buckets going that one. Food is what these were all waiting for. So as you can see on these calves, they have all been dehorned. So an interesting fact that um, some people might not know is every single calf, cow, is born with horns, and then it's actually law to debud them, so to take their horns away. So you have to do this before they're six weeks old. Um, we just inject them so they can't feel it and you just basically take the nerve away from the horn and then it will stop the horn from growing. So every single cow is born with horns and then the farmer... Cow, they are horned animals, which don't have horns. Certain, which is who? Uh, certain breeds can be polled. I think you can have polled. Some of the Hereford breeds are polled. They're, so they don't, they don't, they're bred and they don't have horns. So it's not every... Calf is born, okay, I'm but, mistaken. Yeah. So it says lovely when you go to dehorn and you find one with no horns. Yeah, with no horns to dehorn. Yeah, so you can just see where it's green, that's an antibiotic spray that we sprayed in there just to make sure it doesn't get infected. That's why it's green. Um, it's because of the colour of the spray. So yeah, as you can see, they're doing really well. And yeah, you don't mind, do you? Moving on to food. So my mum has just topped these up with flakes. So, she's just going to tip it into their bucket. So this is what we call calf flakes or flaky. 
Um, basically, this is what we use for the baby calves. So it's just full of like loads of different nutrients for the calves, like l different I nuts. I have this for breakfast every day. It's really nice. Just uh, my own milk crème, total Welsh milk on it, and it tastes gorgeous. And you can see how well I'm looking. <laughs> So well, he doesn't, similar. but I might very make similar. him eat it tomorrow. It is very similar. <laughs> but yeah, it is similar in the sense that they get all their nutrients and all from there. So it's very different to what other animals will eat because obviously a newborn calf has different needs to a weaned calf. So as you can see, they've gone straight to eat it, which is lovely. So it's better to give them fresh every single day. It's better for them to eat it empty and to have to give them fresh every single day than to give them absolutely loads and them not eat at all. So we have a cow called Maddie and she gave birth two weeks ago and she gave birth to this little thing. So me and my dad are arguing over what to call her because if I go to her back end, she hasn't got a tail. Oh. <laughs> so she was quite literally born with no tail at all. So where the tail would normally start by here, so her bum is quite literally by there, so I'm not gonna to get too close. Um, you would normally have a tail then going over the bum and the vagina, but she doesn't. Um, a tail is to get rid of flies. What else is tail floor? Yeah, just flicking off flies, really. Um, yeah. Protect the back end and keep it clean. So we'll obviously look after her. That's the beauty of us being able to do that. And we can put things on her to make sure flies don't get to her and all. But yeah, I want to call her not Ali. So like Natalie, but no tail, hee hee. Um, so I want to call her not Ali. And then dad, what do you want to call her? The cat with no tail. Um, so there's a song called, uh, I went to the desert on a horse with no name. To the desert on a horse with no name. I don't know the rest of the words, but he didn't name the horse because he didn't see any people. So anyway, that's got nothing to do with that. With <laughs> we're not going into the song too much, but yeah, off the back of that, the calf with no tail, and eventually the cow with no tail. Very rare, apparently, and it'd be very interesting to know if anybody's uh, had the same. So, what thing. are you going to call her? Calf the with calf no tail. No tail. That's an awful long name, isn't it? Richard, what are you going to call Richard it William to? Lewis. It's a long name. Him, we don't call you that, do we? Because we you call you Richard or Dad. You probably just call her No Tail. Yeah, but no, no tail is not ha yeah. no tally. Oh, do you I like not tally, oh. ma'am? Do you know what I thought you were calling her? Uh, Nutella, like chocolate. Oh, have you got a name you'd like to put forward? Uh, no, I haven't. I, I'll have to think about it. it you you go with me, surely. You can never. Yeah, you wouldn't, yeah. You definitely so it's between not tally and the calf of no name. Where is tail. she? Oh, the calf of no tail. Here she is. So just for the record as well, we do name, as if you are into our YouTubes, we do name all of our cows. So yeah, there she is with no tail and there's one with a tail. No tail. Tail. No not tail. Ali. Tail. No tail. Tail. No tally. <laughs> not tally. <laughs> anyway, we'll leave that up to you to decide. as the calves get a bit older we just replace the small chops with big chops so they can all stick their heads in so there's about four of them eating there comfortably so the older they get we just kind of adjust to what they need um they haven't been fed yet which is why they're not moving eating. on to the big pens now so this is the older calves when i say they're older they're a few weeks older but calves will mature quite quickly so these calves were born at the start of february and they've moved on to the next stage of weaning so they are still on milk however they are still going to have Flakes. Some flakes. This is what you saw in my dad's breakfast earlier. Yeah. And then we top it up with this. So it's like. So this is wheat, because we bought wheat earlier on in the year, and we mix it with calf rare. So it's a, it's a rearing nut for uh, larger animals, basically. So it's eventually they'll go on to just this, and eventually they'll go on to just that. So this is, as you can see, our big storage of cake. <laughs> Once again, Sorry. our mum is just getting the buckets while we stand here and talk. She just wants to look like she's the most hard-worked, worn-out woman on the planet. <laughs> I am half all your age and I'm just following you around with the camera. Anyway, so again, that's not too far away from the calves, so we don't have to walk too far. And um, yeah, we're just going to pop it in with them now. 
So because these are a bit older, they're a bit more reliant on food, they also get more excited for it. So when my mum tips it in now. And when I said we adjust to how big the pens are, because this is a bigger pen, they've got two troughs. And they've got two big troughs. And they're just going to keep that there. Here. So again, we won't give them too much this morning. We've given them a bucket. And then I'll check their food tonight. When I give them their milk, I'll check their food. If they've eaten it all, they can have some more. If they haven't, they'll um, just have some more when we do this again tomorrow. So it's the same in this pan. And they go to eat. You okay? Yeah? Working really hard again. <laughs> so it is quite a hard job on your own, but it's it's doable. And obviously, as um, my dad said, you would just take longer than if you were doing it on your own. So this is the last pen, and just like that, everyone's fed. So now the last thing to do is hay. So lastly, we give them hay. So with the straw, although they do eat it, as my dad explained at the start, it is more so for bedding, for them to lie on, to make sure the ground is nice and dry for them. Whereas for hay, it's quite literally for them to eat. This so is, um, a little bit sility, I should really point out. We wouldn't no normally use something quite as wet as this for cars. It's not wet, but um, uh, we have got better bales, drier bales, which we normally use. Um, this one got in here accidentally. It's fine. But as I say, um, I would prefer a little bit drier. So. For the calves, yeah. So again, depending on the size group, so the pen my dad is feeding is going to have a lot more hay. Well, this is my mum's already done these. So that's how much the babies are having. In comparison to these are going to have a fair bit in each corner. So we are intending to get some feeders, uh, like half ring feeders to put in the uh, pens. So we actually put this in the pen because they do stand on quite a lot like this. But uh, they're not too bad we'll like this it. size, but that is the plan. If we do, we'll show you. No, I'm just pulling. So yeah, as you can see, the older calves are a lot more um, into their food and excited to have it than, say, these smaller ones. And that does just come with age. But it's so important that newborn calves have access to food and water. Although they won't eat much, it's really important that they have it at hand because it does help a lot towards their growth. Having a lot of snooze. Yeah, exactly. Don't get two ones and some not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, calves are the exact same as humans. Um, yeah, some will drink loads and eat loads, some won't. We've had calves before with like milk intolerance and things like that. It's very rare, but it does happen. So, yeah, and that's the beauty of being here. We feed them milk twice a day. We obviously do this once a day and we're in and out all the time. So, if anyone is a bit unwell or we notice changes in the calves so, so quickly. So if there's ever anything wrong, we're at hand to treat them then. So are you finished? I think so. I think You're the we boss. Are. are. we finished? Yeah. So we can actually do some proper work now. Dad, that is proper work. Looking it, is after... pro it is proper work. Yeah, looking it... after them is really important. I have to say, it's an exceptionally important job. Um, really in the calves. <coughs> Excuse me. Done well is one of the most important jobs on the farm because if they get a great start in life, like a baby or anybody, it's so important. And they will grow on and they'll have less diseases and illnesses as they get older. A weak calf, a poor calf, very often will become uh, ill when it's older. Um, so it's really, really important. And the girls, to be fair, and Dawn, uh, do an excellent job. Um, making sure they have colostrum at birth within six hours is massive. It's probably one of the most important things. Good quality colostrum. And after that, just looking after them, like we do here, as best as we can. This building is probably not quite as eerie as we like, but we can open those two big doors, which we do every day, 
and uh, it works quite well. We've got um, such in the, in the sides there, so it does come through, um, and we don't get too much trouble um, with any disease. So it's working okay. Yeah. For a temporary shed, which it has. And like they won't be years. in here long now. Once they're weaned off milk, they'll move on to different sheds where we can give them plenty of silage and food, and then. Hopefully, sometimes we do get these calves out at the end of summer, but we'll have to play that one by here. Good weather, they'll be out. They'll be out on grass in no time. We'll definitely film that for you. So this is after then. As I said before, they were all quite chilled and calm. But as you can see, they're really, really happy now. They're just munching on their hay. Some of them munching on the food. Natalie is just in there munching on hay. Calves are really inquisitive. They would normally come over and say hi. They're really nosy. Just want to lick everything. And they all have their own little personalities, characteristics. So yeah, these are all Frisian heifers. So they're all girls. So they'll all be future members of Clark and Hill Farm Milking Head. Understand. Closer to the camera, you look bigger then. So I lift you so as you can see, Dawn has cut long legs. I have got long legs. Long <laughs> legs and a short body. Long legs and a short body, yeah. So I, for one, can't wait for Poppy to come back. <laughs> Why? Because um, you've got longer legs. Because you're annoying. I'm not annoying? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. So that's just like a brief overview of what we do to all our newborn calves. So that's our age from newborn to about two months old, we've just showed you. Um, so yeah, like my dad said, it's just so important to make sure they have a really good start to life. Um, and that's what we've tried to achieve here. Yeah, very important they have a good start to life. Yeah. Poppy will be chuffed because she'll be thinking there's three people who have to do a two-man job. <laughs> yeah. Poppy is probably lying in bed watching <laughs> yeah. this video. Hopefully, right? good for her. in bath. Or she might even be in the bath in bath. <laughs> so she will be back next week. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in this week without her. Hopefully you've still enjoyed. <laughs> um, yeah, and actually I wasn't really in it this much this week. So I was just filming you all. I was just following them around with the camera. It should be a lot better. So it's yeah. been a sister and wellies takeover. So if our viewings drop, we know never to do it again. <laughs> Please don't let it drop. Please share. Tell all your friends how good it is. Please don't let us be the ones that brought it down. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Remember to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.